Hello. Oh. Hello, everybody. My name is Richard Hyperion, and welcome back to the Wilds of Wildmount. This will be session number 12, and of course, I play as Moonzik. Joining me today, Lily playing as Windchime, uh, Quinn playing as Animo, Rocky playing as Edward, and Emily, as always, is our lovely dungeon master. And recapping last session with us today is Kale playing as Brian. Take it away. Hello, everybody. Uh, last time on Wilds of Wildmount, we were uh, exploring the mysterious and quite dangerous Firewatch Island. As soon as we arrived, we saw a whole port th full of goods, none of them taken. As we adventured towards the fort, we thought maybe they were fine and just hadn't come to get their gear yet. But alas, as we approached, we were attacked by a Perrington. Perrington? Something like Paddington? that. Perrington bear. Um, with its great wings, it didn't deal a single point of damage as we promptly smited it into the ground. I was quite scared, though. I ran quite far while I hit it with the uh, Eldritch Blasts. Afterwards, we gathered quite a few magical ingredients from it and headed towards the fortress. Inside the uh, fortress, we came across many weird and wondrous things. Some assassin plants with berries that are honestly quite good at making wine, apparently. We entered the, uh, for, uh, we entered the fort uh, in the most roundabout way possible by teleporting up a uh, side entrance where they were brewing wine and f promptly falling through a walkway. Inside we found many, many interesting items like uh, uh, like a tome and something that says property of Borasanth, who we can assume is the leader of the Hermitage. As we explored, we decided to see what was in the basement. And at that point, we were told that the session would end. <laughs> I am very interested to know what's down there. So without further ado, can we start? <laughs> Does anybody have anything else they would like to add? Mm -mm. I call him Mod the Perry <laughs> <laughs> What'd you Perryton say? The platypus. I, I call him Mod the Perryton. <laughs> Alrighty. Critically thinking. We'll start off right where we left off last time. In front of the entrance that was seen to be hidden behind a, uh, a, a false back to a fireplace. A rickety ladder makes its way down as you guys all choose to enter. Is that correct? I think we just sent the bird down and wanted to see down inside, and Edward was going to see what was mm -hmm. down there. Cause, yep. Because uh, the bird had light on it. That it did. Rocky. Yes. You'll notice here, with Cole, down in the, uh, in the cellar, this is the immediate appearance that you see. Um, you see uh, the rickety ladder that leads down from the, uh, from the kitchen through a musty subterranean chamber enclosed by rough masonry walls. Three trembling figures are huddled against the far wall, sharing the chamber with the dusty, de deteriorated remains of an armored corpse. The body's sightless eye sockets stare blankly, and the small silver disc is clutched in one of its skeletal hands. A horizontal crevice between two blocks in the south wall glows with faint daylight, marking a narrow opening that leads outside the, fer the fortress. Son of a bitch, I see it on the map. Is it on the mall? 
uh, as I see this, uh, I'm gonna, you know, shout down to downwards from the ladder. What, what, what's going on down there? Are you guys all right? There are people down there. You see through. Uh, you see through Cole's eyes. Um, the uh, woman seems to kind of pick and push uh, um, a sickly man over into the corner and stands there defensively, looking around uh, with a uh, with a mace. In a protective stance. Uh, British, don't, don't. It's okay, we're not here to hurt you. We're, we just want to know what's going on at this place. You hear faintly the sound of a woman's voice calling back up at you. She says, um... We're armed and not af not afraid to fight. Uh, I'm gonna call uh, them. Do we all hear this? Yes. We're armed, but we do not wish to fight. How how do we how do we know that we can trust you? No, you're not one of them. One of who? We do not know who they are. Uh, she says, You don't know what they are? Uh, roll a persuasion check. Oh. Alright. Uh, oh yeah, I can do that off my token now. Okay. Not bad. It's. She says uh, the 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 corpses. The undead. Are there are undead here. Yeah. Yes, come quickly, quickly, shut it so that they can't find us. I guess we all go down and mm. shut the hatch. Before uh, Muzik climbs down, he's going to mask of many faces into um, uh, Cheem. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah, I'm heading down as well. Okay, go ahead and you can place your tokens if you so desire. It's a little cramped. A little bit. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, what happened here? You see, uh... Like, at first, like, uh, the a woman who appears to be in, uh, um, in some sort of, like, priest garbs, um, uh, blue and gray, um, and, uh, she sees once you guys start coming down the ladder, um, and she gets a good look at you, she puts, uh, puts away her mace, um, she says... Oh, you've <laughs> thank Procon. Oh, you see her kind of like mutter a little prayer. She says, I, "I thought we were gunners for sure." I am still wondering what happened, and if we can continue in some way in helping. As a side note, we don't know who these people are, right? Yeah. Correct. You have no idea, no. Although I can assume that one of them looks familiar from a description. <laughs> um, you see... Um, you see a... Uh, three survivors in the room. Um, you see 
the woman who appears to be in some sort of priest scarves. Um, a very, very ill uh, male human. Um, which is this one appears to be very, very ill. And a slightly ill um, a, sw- a slightly ill dwarf who uh, uh, seems to have dirty blonde hair, mutton chops, the tan <laughs> blind face. Yeah. <laughs> Um, what happened? This means so much. Um, if you're talking about... She gestures over to the body that Brian is staring on, uh, standing on. <laughs> mm-hmm. uh, I, I, I did that on purpose. <laughs> I was going to say, that's um, very Brian to do. I'll leave it to the warlock to handle the dead bodies. Pretty much. <laughs> Uh, she 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 gestures at the uh, uh, at the body, and she says, "He he was here before we came down here and hid." My my name's uh, Janor. Uh, in and... front of full view of everybody, can I just take uh, the silver thing he's holding? <laughs> uh. Um. Yeah, so, uh, let me just see here. Um, the, he seems to be holding a, uh, a small silver circle, uh, that appears to have, uh, uh, the insignia of a procan on it. Um, it's, doesn't, it's not a, like, shield, it appears to be some sort of amulet, some sort of prayer, um, prayer amulet with the symbol of Pokemon on it. Uh, but as you look at th- as you look at him, uh, you do not notice that he is wearing a rather nice looking breastplate. Ooh. A, a, a plus one breastplate, if you must. Ooh. Oh, shit. <laughs> I cannot wear that. It's like, if it's just like a Breath of the Wild. Ooh, nice boots. <laughs> When you're saying breastplate, you're talking like plate armor, right? A breastplate. Yeah. That is an armor. It's plus one. Breastplate. Which I believe is 14 plus dex plus one. Oh, it's just like uh, scale. Plus movement. dex to a yeah. breastplate. Just making sure. Yeah, it's just uh, scale mail, but like not scandal. Without the disadvantage. Statistically it's, it's, yeah, it's, uh, uh, ba- it is basically scale mail without the disadvantage. Yeah, uh, so it's medium armor. It is medium. Uh, yeah, so that would give, that's a really good armor piece. Um, anyway, uh, I still cannot wear that. Pretty sure Windchime's the only one that has proficiency to heavy Medium, medium armor. Oh, medium, medium, medium armor. armor. Yeah. I think moons that could also t- too. No, rogues only get light. Well, mm, oh. well, it's 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 medium armor, but it leaves it leaves the wearer relatively un- unencumbered. I would imagine it uh, doesn't uh, hinder my sneak at all, but that's up to the DM's discretion. It does not hinder your sneak. It has to you do, do not with have your proficiency. Advantage. Yeah, it's your proficiency. You get disadvantage, so you get penalties for like you know, wearing armor. If you're not you proficient with your right, uh, yeah. and you need a certain strength stat to even wear medium, you need thirteen. Which I think I have. Yeah. Well, you need I, both oh, right? I proficiency. Am, I am off. Never mind. I can't wear that. I am only 12. So, uh, Windchime. In that case, uh... Windchime and Nemo are the only ones I can wear it without, you know. And, you know, I'm I'm not... Uh, you are wrong on the strengths necessarily. You don't need strength. Anyway, this is something... This is something we can mull over later. This is something we can mull over later. At any rate... 
It doesn't matter who gets it. It's that. It's on the dead man. Uh, it's yes. It's on currently on the dead man. Um. Um. I'm gonna say, isn't this the symbol of uh, that god you were just uh, whispering a prayer to? Yes, yes, it is. Have I'm, I'm so sorry. Have you guys seen Aaron? Aaron? Yeah. Um. He's a human. Um. He's kind of got palish skin, a little bit of a beard. We haven't seen no. anybody here on the island before. We haven't seen... It was seen... completely deserted. There's no bodies <sighs> anywhere. He is correct. We have not seen any living or dead bodies on the island until we come down here. <laughs> it's kind of um, silly of me, but I hope he... Uh, I hope he went, got away. I hope so, too. Um... So, one time, that uh, human over there that seems so sick, do you think you could help him? Oh, yeah, definitely. <laughs> <laughs> I've uh, totally. Hey, how are you? <laughs> okay, so, go ahead and roll me a medicine check. Oh. There we go. Oh, that damn! 20, okay, that so, twenty. That is officially is that 50th? the fiftieth nat twenty. That's our fiftieth nat twenty of the campaign. Yeah. Oh, what oh, actually? Oh, hell yeah, yeah, baby! That's what we've been waiting for. That's what it's all about. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> Every twenty. So as you as you look at him, um, you. Let's see. How do I want to put this? <clears throat> hmm. If there is a zombie virus, I am not going to be very happy. <laughs> <laughs> ah. So, the, the disease is... First off, you notice that uh, both of these people, although more so with the human male, has uh, these large, grotesque blue boils on their face and their back. Um, it, uh, um, you know that it's probably most often acquired through wounds caused by other affected creatures. Um, mm -hmm. and straight up here, you rolled a nat 20. I'm just going to give you the entire stat block here of what, what exactly is going on. Um, the disease is carried by undead, um, and the boy, the disease's boils manifest in uh, in a few hours, uh, causing the victim's uh, constitution and charisma scores to decrease one d four each to a minimum of three. It is quickly followed by a fever and tingling in the extremities. A uh, an infected creature is vulnerable to radiant damage and gains the ability to breathe underwater. At the end oh. of each long rest, an infected creature makes a DC 12 constitution saving throw. On a success, the victim regains one point of constitution and one point of charisma lost to the disease. If the infected creature regains all of the points lost to the disease, it is cured. Other effects that raise the, the, the victim's ability scores do not cure the, the disease. On a failed saving throw, the, the victim would take 18 necrotic damage as the boils burst and spread. A creature reduced to zero hit points by this damage cannot regain hit points until the disease is cured. Although it can be stabilized as normal. Mm -hmm. Gain the ability to Sounds breathe great. underwater, you say. Although, by looking at these two people, you don't think that they would fare well by putting them any through any sort of uh, strenuous activity. <laughs> Do I know what it's called? Mm -hmm. You rifle back through a uh, through your brain here, and you read a medical textbook once upon a time that mentioned mm -hmm. a, uh, a disease called blue rot. Blue rot? Okay. Um, do I know how to heal it? 
um, to heal it, um, you have to cure disease. Okay. <laughs> Otherwise, um, you can, depending on the overall uh, amount of health a being might have, um, you know, you might be able to cure their wounds mm -hmm. to a point, but they would still have the disease. Right? Okay. It, it, I mean, you could, again, heal those wounds, but at the end of the day... Yeah, they still have... Symptoms, not the cause, right? Yeah. Right. Um, um, is cure disease like a set, like a whole level or a cantrip? Or... Say that again? Do I have cure disease? Or do I have to... I'm not sure. It's not in my spells right now. I mean, no, it's then... Lesser Restoration is a spell that cures diseases, right? Right. Or, yeah, go ahead. So. It's a level 2 spell. Yeah, we're level 3, so we can cast them. Yep. Yeah. So you should have Lesser Restoration. However, looking at, uh, looking at the human male, you don't think he's if if he doesn't get help, you barely think he'll make it through the hour. So we, we don't have time for her to long rest to get it. No. Correct. Oh, oh, because we didn't rest between the fight. Okay. Nope. I think, I well, think it also I has to do with uh, with whether or not you have it prepared, right? Because you get you get yeah. to prepare your spells on a long rest, is Claire. I mean, I think I could probably find a way to, you know, have him survive through the hour, but I'm not sure this is a long-term solution. Um, looking at uh, the dwarf, you would know that you would think uh, probably 20 hours, not even a full day, before he would succumb to the disease. We have mm -hmm. it. Well, all we need well, is eight to succumb to, to the disease. We mean, like, they literally die from losing health. The boil all, just... all we need is eight for when time to prepare those spells, right? So we can get the dwarf. I mean, uh, we I need to stabilize probably... the human. I mean, I'm not. Cure wounds, uh, stabilize the human to the point where we could take a long re rest and you could prepare that spell, Winchamp? Yeah. What do you think? Yeah, I can prepare it. It just will take me some time. Edward, what was the stabilization idea you had? I mean, I'm not sure if it counts for something, but I can bestow enhanced ability onto uh, one of the sickly patients, give them advantage on constitution, as well as, uh, you know, bolster their vitality just a little bit more for them to tough it out. Uh, what was her name again? Sorry, I need to put that in my notes. Janor. I'll actually go ahead and put both of them in your in, in your um, book here. <laughs> inventory. Yeah, I'll actually inventory. just put them in your inventory. Yeah, you are I not cast, carrying them in your bag. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I cast uh, Enlarge Reduce and shrink them into my bag. <laughs> uh, <laughs> Honey, Janor. help, I shrunk the kids. Yes. Right. Uh, I, I assume you've heard what we've been talking about. Um, if we do, uh, if we can stabilize these two for eight hours or so, which I may be able to uh, prepare a spell to heal them of their disease, but uh, it won't be foolproof. Okay. Um, I I can't help but um, hmm. it. Um, I'm not sure that we have eight hours. Even even if we are able to stabilize them, I think that that they're going to come back again tonight. 
They came last oh. night. We can hold them off, I believe. However, um... We are going to need more information on just what they are. Yes, definitely. Of course. Um... I, I'll tell you everything I know. I was... I was in the library... Um, yesterday evening. Reading on the restriction. And... <laughs> <laughs> I was... <laughs> um, yesterday evening, and... I just... I suddenly had this... This premonition of... Of danger. It, it had to have been, uh, Procan. That's... I can't describe... I can't describe it any other way. I heard, like... <laughs> He, like I heard him in my in my mind, and he told me to come here, to this place. Um, I think, based off of what um, what he was holding, she gestures to the uh, to the skeleton. Um, I think um, he, that's the remains of a of a fellow priest of Procan. Um. Anyway, as soon as I had the premonition, I, I reacted as quickly as I could, and I, I found Aaron in the kitchen and grabbed him, and I heard the dormitory door splintering. Um, very quickly after that, um, Morley and Barrett, they, they staggered in here, um, wounded, and I just basically dragged them inside this hole and in the cellar and sealed the entrance as best I could. When I heard the, the door bang open, I peeked through, I saw this corpse dripping wet. It was shriveled and discolored as if by a long immersion in the sea. It stalked into the room and began to search. So I, I sealed the door. Miraculously, it seemed to miss our hiding place. Though it kept scrambling at the floor. I could hear it as if it could sense us. And when the first glow of dawn showed, showed in the hole in the wall there, it suddenly fled. So, listen. I don't know I... any reason why she would want to, to do... Is she not done her story? I mean, I was gonna go a little bit more, but that's fine. You can talk. <laughs> no, no, I'm I'm sorry. Uh, as you no, know, I was I was wondering if I could do. I, I wanted to see if she was like she was lying or something. I don't know. That was so. Roll an insect check. <laughs> yeah. Go ahead. Roll, uh, seven. Uh, she could be telling the truth. She you could. Think that she be, probably is. She could be telling the truth. That's a ringing endorsement. <laughs> Roll the seven, bitch. Don't don't fuck with I... me. <laughs> <laughs> and anyway, um, right towards the end of the night, I saw, oh god, I saw those monsters dragging the uh, bodies <laughs> of my friends um, into the sea. You can kind of look and you can barely make out the boat there. She points through the crevice. Um, all of them, all of them, walked right back into the sea, dragging like several nets behind them. I, I at dawn today, Aaron, he went out to search for any survivors. Um, he said he planned to to keep watch for passing ships and to ring the bell to draw their attention. We but heard the bell this morning. I haven't seen him back. You you did? We heard the bell this morning as we were coming to the island. Oh, so it's possible that he's still, he's still up here. There. Yes, it's possible. We haven't searched oh. the bell tower yet. Oh. oh, I hope so. He said, um, he said he'd try to fortify the place 
as best as he could, just in case they came back. I, uh... Good, good. I'm... I... <laughs> um... I... I just... I think that, uh... No matter what, I think that the... That those things will be back tonight. That's entirely possible, and we're well, uh, we're more than able and willing to help, but I think we should go look for Aaron as well. Hopefully he's still in the bell tower. Mm. It, it helps if you're all together and in one place. It's easier to guard. I... Yeah, thank you. I... I can only thank God for this. Procan. <laughs> yes. Um, I mean, you could, you could, in fact, you know, thank uh, us, but... I gotta take care of something real quick. I'll be back in a minute. Oh. Moonsick, where are you? No. Uh, I, I have no idea what's going on in that man's head. I mean, uh, wait, <laughs> what was his name? Chim. 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 <laughs> um, I'm going to say so uh, you're a priest right? yes I am does Procan offer you any special powers that might help wind chime with the healing of those two? I mean he gave me the premonition but n no I can't do any of his more Substantial things. <laughs> it is a shame. Otherwise, those two look like they can't really move, don't they, guys? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. Oh. I feel I like we should so. probably. I feel like we should probably, uh, get our friend from the bell tower, bring him here. That way, we can protect everybody. Do we want to go all together, or do we want to leave one or two people here to make sure nothing comes let's down leave, to harm them? Let's leave Windchime here. She, uh, after we use everything we can stabilize, she can attempt to start the long rest for uh, the ability to uh, heal them. Sounds good. And then... Edward. I don't think this man over here is going to make it through the hour. Um, I could make an attempt to try to Please do. his vitality. So Please perhaps, do. We liked that idea. So perhaps uh, myself, have... Animo, and Brian will go to the bell tower then. <laughs> Alright. Uh, I'm going to stick out a mage hand. I'm going to tap him on the shoulder with a mage hand. And through the touch range, I'm going to cast Enhance Ability and cast Bear's Endurance. Uh, so he gets advantage on all constitution checks for an hour, and he also gets 2d6 temporary hit points. And then, cure wounds? <laughs> to try and, uh, help him with his symptoms before the 8 hours? Mm -hmm. That's the best I can do. Sorry, I'm not more of a help. With all of this. You've, you've already done more than I can. And uh, you see, um, as you do that, you, see, you hear a, a, oh, a groan from the man with uh, the blue boils all over his face. Yep. Uh, and I'm gonna. A little better now. I'm gonna whisper uh, to um, I'm gonna whisper to Edward. Uh, don't let uh, uh, don't let our uh, dwarvish friend um, leave. I'm gonna whisper back. I don't plan. Edward. Oh, I don't plan on letting him leave again anyway. We're all trapped in the night. Edward, could you do something for me? Maybe not right this moment, but as soon as uh, as soon as you're able, Cole might be able to fly around the island and keep a, uh, keep a watch 
for these things that come out of the sea. I think for our safety, that's probably better than sending anyone over out of this little old cellar over here. But we agree. still have to... We still have to get... Um, we still have to get person in the battle tower, right? That's right. All right. You guys can go up. I'm going to make sure that this these people here in the uh, cellar are okay and tended to with wind chime. Tell Cole if anything happens. Uh, I'll be able to sense anything that he sees. Will do. All right. Let's go get Aaron in the bell tower then. Okay. So, um... I'm just gonna take everybody so everybody can see what's going on. Um, you guys exit the cellar with a good luck from Janor. Um, it's loading here. Mm-hmm. Okay. Alrighty. What would you all like to do? Uh, before we get going, I'm going to let Brian and, and uh, Animo know that uh, there was a door in the second story that led to the bell tower, but that was barricaded. And that um, Moonsick didn't, like, the reason Moonsick didn't take the barricade down is that he was afraid that there was something in the bar like behind the barricade. Makes sense. You He's barricade sure. against something coming out, not against something coming in. Precisely. So, so, what are our chances that it's actually Aaron in there? I'm not sure. But there, I believe there was a hallway on the first floor leading to the bell tower as well. But, I'm not Let's sure. Let's use that. Let's use that first and see if we can get anywhere. I love watching you guys. They're just shuffling around. <laughs> um, you approach the door. We have to go through the walls. Why would uh, we have to go through the doors? We can teleport through walls. I don't know what you're talking about. That would break, that uh, would break the game. I mean, I don't know about you, but <laughs> <laughs> that would break the immersion. <laughs> <laughs> um, you approach the, the door. It's locked. Uh, Mundix is going to try his uh, <laughs> thieves tools to, you know, pick the lock. And you remember, you do have a thieves tool. Yep. And Dex. Yeah. Um. Oh, cool! You, uh. You try you know, the door. Damn it. It, Still an it doesn't. It doesn't open. I'm going to look over at Moonzik's uh, attempt, and I'm going to go. Wow! I knew you were trustworthy. Thank Jesus. you for that. Do you want to give Just it a try, Miss Brine? Absolutely, and I'm going to cast Eldritch Blast. <laughs> Brian is great with doors. <laughs> okay. Well, I was going Ooh, to try the diplomatic hit. solution, hey, but that's a hit? question. Yeah, I, specifically, I'm aiming for right above where the lock is. Okay. Roll to um, hit. He's five feet from the door. She gets disadvantage. No, I'm just kidding. Uh, also, is Moonzik still... I am going to choose Moonzik as the target. What? <laughs> oh, my God. Oh, my God. Two nat that ones. One. Okay. In a row. All right. Nope. It, you, uh, I, I miss the door. You feel like the sturdy, the you hit the wall. You hit the wall. You aimed at Moonzik and you hit the wall. <laughs> I, I'm just lucky I rolled out of the way. I'm like over here now. Oops. Yeah. Sorry, I I am uh, not very uh, practiced with this. Can I try again? Actually, I think I'd feel more comfortable with it, with Animo breaking down the door of anything. Alrighty then. <laughs> should I should I just like like fully go 
Ooh, strong buff man! Bring it down! I'm, my strength isn't even that fucking high. <laughs> you can always yes. roll with Just... the great sword. With the great sword? Yeah, you could try to. Or you could just it knock through. on the door like a normal person. I for you know what? <laughs> I don't know if that's like him though. Is that very him to just knock on the door? Is it? He's you know, pretty fuck chill. It. I want to knock on the door and see. Because <laughs> <laughs> as it is true that as a barbarian, as barbarians go, I am very chill. Yep. No. <laughs> you knock on the door. Hello? My friends want to break in. <laughs> no. Okay, that was alarmingly ineffective. I'm going to Eldritch Blast it again. <laughs> Uh, I legitimately have to target something. That's why I do that. Okay. A 21, 21 hit. You see <laughs> as you blast it with forest. It's like a boof. Um, wood starts to, to splinter. And it seems to be a little bit weaker. I've but been waiting for it. your response, Emily. So that was, that was something. <laughs> I'm guessing there was that one. There is there no response. Uh, response. Yeah, so I, I asked the question, was there any response? But my mic went out when I said, I want to try your thieves tools. So oh. I never got to do that. And that feels really annoying. Because Kale just Should rolled I over to try me the didn't tools? realize that I existed. I want to try the thieves tool. <laughs> Dude, do you I want to want try it now that the door to is try the splintering? Tools. I think that's very funny. You're saying this like barbarians don't just have high decks. Fucking or should have high decks. Yeah, go for it. Moon Moon's just gonna have hand you the efficiency though. <laughs> Moon. Uh... Yeah, what do I do in this? Give it a try. Give it a try. Uh, sleight of hand. Just, just roll sleight of hand. Just roll sleight yep. of hand. Oh my god. That so fucking bad. door, though, like it's yeah. a complicated. Right. Lock. It's a little bit. It's a little bit better than I thought. I understand why I, you're in trouble. I am going to say, look, look, it's worked getting up the trap door. Why won't it work on a normal door? And I'm going to uh, wait for his hands to move out of the way and Eldritch blast the same spot right above the lock. Well, is yeah. the 21 alright to use, or no? The 21 hits, but it doesn't break through. The 17 hits, and you notice that there is a... Itch. You can't quite get your, like, um, like get like a hand through to open up from the other side, but you think maybe a good punch could. No, 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 Alrighty, no, then. No, 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 no. Oh. I'm the, pun I'm the puncher. Hold on, hold on, <laughs> hold on, hold on. Hold on. Can I Keep see the through the hole before we go gung ho into this? Yes, you can see through the door. I'd like to see through the door before we get too far into breaking it down to see if it's worth breaking it down. Okay, go ahead and roll me a perception check. Uh. There we okay. go. Okay. So, you glance inside um, with the, the little bit of light that is emitting from uh, Cole, because Cole has light cast upon him. Um, you, uh, you see a damp, dark tower. The room, as you kind of stick your face towards it, there are smells of rot and mildew. Um, and the floor kind of sheens with puddles of water um, as trickles of moisture dribble down the wall to the west and south. Um, what might have been at one time barrels and crates stacked against the walls have seemed to decay into near unidentifiable heaps of mold. As you kind of angle your head up to look at the ceiling, um, 
you notice uh, that there appears to be a patch of uh, green slime that lurks on the ceiling of the western portion of the room. Um, it seems to be like a 10 by 10 foot patch. Um, it does not look um, pleasant. It looks kind of as menacing as a green slime from the ceiling could be. <laughs> Oh, yes, yeah, ceiling's clean. Uh, I'm going to let the other two know this and uh, say, I don't feel comfortable going into this way. I mean, what we've gotten so far. Like, actually, because you can kind of see inside. I'll just... Do you think anybody is in there? I don't mm. believe so. I see well, it. we'll have to clean it out at some point. But perhaps now is not the time. He's going to shout inside the door. Aaron, if you're in this room, give us some kind of signal. Hmm. I guess that's our answer then. There is another let's, entrance we can check. Let's see what's up on the second floor. That was horrible. That was horrible for my accent, and I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, to be fair, every time I go into Cheem, like, his voice changes every time. This is true. Ooh, okay. All right, I gotta... Wait, no, my... Uh, never mind. Uh, yep. I don't know. It's taken a hot sec. All right, there we go. I see what you mean by the barricade. Right. But this isn't exactly where the bell tower was on the other side. So there could be a thing with the, in the hallway. This is true. Why don't we just get our weapons ready? Yeah, I'm gonna and I'm, I'm gonna, gonna position here. My dagger. <laughs> I'm gonna right. take down all this, all this stuff. Okay. Manual labor. Uh, you you slowly you know pull all of the uh, um, the barricades and and things um, off, <clears throat> and uh, you are able to open the door. <laughs> You uh, you notice a walkway that leads to open sky. Um, it overlooks the grotto down here, um, formed by the island's rocky peak and the hermitage's walls, leading mm. from the hermitage to the large tower on its west side. Uh, I mean, that uh, is actually quite pretty for, pretty for a barricaded area. Creepy yeah, it's away open. full of pretty stuff. One thing you do immediately notice is you notice um, both, like all throughout the walls, appears to be uh, uh, battlements and uh, arrow slits. That's these little triangle things. Mm -hmm. Every um, time you see one. I'd like to see if they have been used recently. I don't know. Well, how an do investigation that. check? That's going to be a high investigation check. I have no way of telling how, how... No way of knowing how to tell if they've been used. But you can, like, stick your hand through them. So there is clearly enough space for arrows and even spells if you wanted to cast through. Very defensible. For some reason it feels like you're... I mean, are you trying to keep this place? Um. <laughs> not as such. 
I mean, you were talking about how we had to clean downstairs. Now you're talking about, oh, very defensible. I mean, I, I, listen, I understand. We took a boat, but... <laughs> this feels well, like I'm I a little mean, bit more cursed. No? This, this is a, there is a bunch of people who have been attacked. We're going to try and help them out. Based off everybody has What everybody has been talking about. If we have to leave and wait for a siege... Uh, of these undead sea creatures, Animal. which, by the way, for an island that worships Prokan, undead sea creatures constantly invading. Candace us. Animo, a, a word of advice to you. The only difference between this fortress and the Wave Chaser is that we spilt the blood on the Wave Chaser. Yeah, but you know, doesn't that give it a more homey feel? <laughs> All right, then. Um. Oh, oh, that's fucking. Oh awesome. my fucking god. <laughs> Anyway, Man, I was this just is a quote worthy of a highlight reel. <laughs> <laughs> I was just thinking it might be useful to know the place if we're going to be fighting against a bunch of I know a angry great undeads. place to hold pirate gold is exactly what I'm saying. All right, let's go to the next <laughs> place. As you guys uh, go to open this door, it's locked. <laughs> uh, oh boy. <laughs> Let me give this another okay, shot. Okay, fuck this. Can you just do what you did before? I'm, uh, I'm looking Hold at on. This is a different door. I want to give this one at least a try. <sighs> jingle, 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 jingle. Fifteen? Fifteen. It, you are able to open it. And I'm just going oh, to... Oh, shit! And I hear the... I hear the those? Yeah. Um, well, Dex. Fuck. Look at that. Bundles, barrels, and... Uh, barrels, bundles, and boxes are piled um, haphazardly across this tower room. A narrow path leads to the clutter, through the clutter to a staircase curving along the chambers in a wall. Um, the, chair, the stairs rise up to an open trapdoor in the ceiling. Um, this appears to just be an accumulation of just fucking junk. Um, all kinds of what appears to be uh, um, like mundane, mundane equipment seems to be stored around here. I want to look for any kind of signs of a creature. Okay, more we'll investigation. A terrible investigation. Oh! There, you you know <laughs> beyond a matter of fact, the only creatures um, other than you, you notice that there's a couple of rat droppings, um, like, back and behind things, um, and with the clear path through, you, uh, you recognize that somebody probably used this to go up, um, even semi-frequently. Other things you do notice in your investigation looking for things, I'm just gonna give it to you here, um, you notice, um, a one-foot length of hemp and rope. A harp with only one string, a single left boot, a bucket with no bottom, etc. You also find um, a 10 pound cask of iron nails, a bent crowbar, three clay planters for the garden, a hammer, a rusty handsaw, a hooded lantern, and a few 10 foot lengths of hemp and rope with a stack of firewood. And because you rolled a nat 20, and because I'm just <laughs> blurting out everything at you, uh, <laughs> you find a case of 12 plus 2 bolts left behind by the garrison. And it appears to have been overlooked by the residents of the Hermitage. Plus 2 bolts? Jesus, one man's trash bolts. is another man's treasure, These right? are fine bolts. Like they uh, are, they are whoo! sharp as shit. Open, I want to open the case to these guys. A, yeah. Shoot. Yeah. These. <laughs> Shoot. Uh, somebody who uses a crossbow might find them particularly useful. 
I mean, I don't use a crossbow. Any of you guys, you guys use crossbow? Who, who is it that uses a crossbow? I mean, I'm good to pocket them. I mean, I, I just want to stare at these guys. I'm talking to you two, by the way. <laughs> That's okay. Um, wind chime. You've seen wind chime use crossbows. <laughs> Where the fuck is wind chime? <laughs> wind chime is, is, is trying resting. to... Attempting to long rest, at least. Yes. <laughs> okay, I wanna, I wanna, I wanna pocket this case for the meantime. Meanwhile, while he's rummaging around, um, am I, am oh, I, I able to look you. up the tower and see like the bell itself? I, I do want to relay the information that that people have been using this area uh, semi frequently to go to go up, which is which I, I'll add is strange because I mean. It's barricaded. And hell, with a nat 20, I would also say that with all of the supplies that are in this room, you might have some... You think passively that, you know, maybe if you were to be doing some reinforcing of the hermitage later, that uh, these tools and supplies might be helpful. Gotcha. Um, Sounds great. <laughs> looking up the stairs like is there a floor directly above me right here am I able to look up and see the bell mm, there is a floor so the stairs lead up to a trap door in the ceiling okay I'm going to walk up to the trap door and I'm going to knock on it first knock 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 no response. Am I able to open said trapdoor? Yes, you are. I'm going to... It's a, little, it's a little heavy as if something was set on it, but you can push it up, no problem. Oh, I don't like this. I'm going to slowly open the door and climb up into the bell tower. You do that. You, this, this is, uh... Oh, right here, I suppose. That's where the trapdoor is, right? Yeah! <clears throat> um... Much in personal uh, space right now. <laughs> well? Give me just a second. Give me just a second here, and I'll describe this room for you. <laughs> okay. <laughs> wow, that laugh is really <laughs> terrifying. It's fucking terrifying. Okay. Um... <laughs> A cast iron pot belly stove squats on the north upper of the upper level of the fortress's main tower, its stovepipe extending out the arrow slit to the north. A wooden frame and the slats of an old bed are pushed up against the spiral staircase um, that rises to another trapdoor in the ceiling, leading to the open belfry above. Under an arrow slit looking towards the island's western peak, a dusk a dusty desk is covered in debris and fresh bird droppings. We look Hinges hang on either of the uh, of each arrow slit, indicating that one time they had shutters to keep out the elements. A section of the wall towards the southwest has collapsed inward, opening up to the rocky slope of the island's smaller hill, uh, ten feet below. The uh, pile of rubble covers the smashed remains of a chair. Music would like to investigate uh, any possible contents of the desk and what might be underneath this rug here. Um, so underneath the the rug? Yeah, like that's the first thing I check. Um. Well, roll me, roll me a uh, investigation check. God damn it! Why okay. can't I get a nat twenty? <laughs> <laughs> um. So, you 
notice that the uh, there's nothing underneath the uh, the little rug. Um, you do notice that it seems to be that the the weathering of storms and salty air had eroded uh, the mortar in a part of the wall. Mm-hmm. And then uh, the desk, if there's anything inside of it. Do you notice um, on the, on top of the desk is a uh, is an open journal, and if I could direct everybody's attention to your journal tab, it's loading. Give me a second. And the journal tab here, as soon as it. It's being super slow at the moment. There it is. Okay, everybody should have um, Archaea's Archaea's journal, and I will read this out loud for everybody. Our worst fears are confirmed. Virgil has brought word of disaster. A war galley, fully loaded with pirates, approaches from the southwest. It flies the flag of the revelry and bears the name of the cursed ship, Tamara. We must prepare what feeble defense we can muster. muster. Woe to the folk of the coast at the approach of this bloody tide. You flip the page. Miracle of miracles! The storm lord has answered the prayers of our illustrious chaplain. A furious storm blew in from the open sea and swept the war galley to its doom. But I believe that the vessel went down near the pit of hatred and ill-starred undersea chasm two miles south of Firewatch Isle. This does not bode well, for the rift is said to be a passage to a source of indeterminable evil that was long ago sealed away. If the wreckage should rupture the wards, terrible darkness might be sealed, excuse me, terrible darkness might be unleashed. I must mount an expedition to the sunken hulk and make sure all is well. Page flip again. A fell wind blows on this evening. I fear the wards on the rift have been broken. I must set out first thing in the morning to inspect the wreckage. Pages are blank after that. Um, Moonzik with Animo reading over his shoulder uh, tells Brian what they just read. Hmm. So I think we know what happened to the garrison now possible. It's possible that this person set out by them. No, oh, no, actually. If the person had... Not an expedition. If the person had set out on this expedition, I think the boat to the south would be gone. I think they were one day too late. I should, um, I should mention here, uh, most of the journal is moldy and ineligible. In in inlegible. Um... And the pages that you were able to read are the few that are intact towards the end of the, of the big. Um, or the boat was here from the monks. Remember, there are two parties who have been here. It was always a question of how, of why the Concord uh, abandoned this place. Now I think we know why. No, this was from those monks, this journal. That is not how I read it. Can I get a confirmation on that? Um, you believe that due to the age of the journal, this is not the monks. Oh, okay. This is... My bad. Probably greater than ten years old. Oh, okay. My bad. <laughs> a decade. So then the monks come, up, come here uh, not knowing what happened. And... Now the calamity from that trench is attacking them where they sleep. Where? Taking the bodies probably down to be transformed into more how of long, these undead. How long undead. have these monks been here again? It, it slips my mind. I think we're here three or four years. It wasn't that long. And yet, it's only recently that they began these attacks. 
if it's been a problem for more than ten years, why were they able to settle for three or four without any problem? Perhaps there was no disturbance. Hmm. Well then, shall we continue upward and see if, um, if we can find any sign of Aaron? Unless anybody else would like to look in this room. I will look around in this room. Investigation, please. Yeah, I'm doing. Don't worry. I'm doing. Okay, Ooh. you got it. You got it. That was close. Um, <laughs> you you go up to the pile of rubble in the southwest corner um, and kind of moving some rocks around. Um, you notice that there appears to be some sort of secret compartment in part of the surviving wall. Just, uh, just south of the, uh, the west arrow slit. Um, you, uh, you see inside of this, uh, uh, compartment is a variety of things. You guys ready? Here we go. A ring of free, a ring of free action. Oh! Three ounces of oil of slipperiness. Three potions of water breathing. Oh! An immovable rod. A folding boat. What? A bag of holding. Ooh. Inside of the bag of holding, you notice several fishing nets, along with 500 feet of a weighted hemp and rope. A small baton the size of a torch with continual flame cast on it. Jesus. A small container uh, uh, of uh, three ounces of sovereign glue. Holy shit. Uh, how do you guys spell that sovereign? How do you spell sovereign? S O V E R E I G N. Yep. Excuse me. Sovereign glue. Rain. Sovereign glue. Um... I'll go through that one more time. A ring of free action. Three ounces of oil of slipperiness. Three potions of water breathing. An immovable rod. A folding boat. The bag of holding. Containing several fishing nets. 500 feet of weighted hemp and rope. A small metal baton the size of a torch with continual flame cast on it. And a, uh, and a small metal container uh, conta with uh, three ounces of sovereign glue. Oh, um, I actually I did also forgot to mention you have uh, in also... Um, also in the bag of holding is uh, uh, six small capsules. Um, you're not really sure what they are, but possibly identify might tell you. Thank you. Uh, I need half a second. Sorry, guys. No, you're fine. It's okay. Uh, it's a lot of stuff. That is a lot of stuff. That is a lot of stuff. I know. One of the so you good. guys just found the jackpot. We found the immovable rod. I am so. I'm. So I'm just trying to figure out because I can't figure out the two bags that are there. Neither of them seem to be leaking, but there's milk. There's milk all over, it, all in the fridge and in the bag. I I didn't notice it uh, leaking. So, I was really hoping you'd say you did, then I wouldn't have to continue to investigate. I know, one. I'm sorry. <laughs> sorry about that. One of the bags of milk I bought exploded. Or, not exploded. How so dare has you? A leak. Has a leak. Um, Alright, uh, Brian this is going to fault. happily pick up a bag of holding. Uh, and the immovable rock. Actually, all of this stuff. Um, <laughs> you klepto. She's, she's just gonna pick it up. Uh, and she's gonna go, Look! 
I've only heard stories about this. It's bigger on the inside than it is on the outside. And she's gonna plunge her hand all the way through. <laughs> like, all the way into the bag. She's not gonna pick anything out. Like, obviously she had to, like, figure out what's inside it. But, uh, I, she's not gonna, like, show off anything. Uh, she's gonna put the move. She's gonna put this in her inventory. Uh, what is a ring of free action? Basically, you can't um, be paralyzed or restrained, and it prevents difficult terrain from reducing your movement. Oh my um, god. It's like a like a passive, almost like a freedom of movement spell, but it requires attunement. Now, it does why does she get all of this? <laughs> we, we, um, we get to choose who gets it. Hey, we will hey, again, um, I... I know that uh, there is definitely somebody uh, who is going to want this uh, for just the ability to not uh, have to worry about uh, difficult terrain um, when I'm casting stuff. I want to. Uh, yeah. Give it to me. Um, <laughs> but that's the Take your bag of come. holding, Brian. Come on. <laughs> we will. We will come to this later when everybody is all around. Boy, you can just give it to me right now. And when we're in less dire straits. Uh... You already have some oil of slipperiness, right? Uh, <laughs> anymore? <laughs> uh, that's what you want to call it. Uh, wait, hold on. <laughs> Let me just... <laughs> God damn if you do, I will give... The, this uh, slipperiness stuff to uh, Moonzik. If we have to fight at the top, I think that will be helpful. I mean, the only thing in my actual inventory is a book on sailing and a book that's written in a different language. I still have no idea how to read this. <laughs> oh, let me try. Uh, Cole is going to immediately, like, you know, upon hearing different language, and I still have no idea how to read this, he's going to caw at you. He's gonna peck at the book. <laughs> For you're a bird. And I put it back away. He's gonna caw again. For it is a crow. At the book. For it For, is a crow. He cannot speak, for he is a crow. <laughs> right. um, let's see what's going on. Uh, and she's gonna make sure that uh, all these wonderful items are stashed securely in her inventory. And trapdoor is locked, I presume? It is. Moonsick is going to knock before attempting to lockpick. There's no answer. I'm busting out my lockpick tools. Mm. I am going to, as he's uh, picking the lock, say, Hi! Hi. We are entering. Um, we really hope you're okay. We are not evil or full of things that give people pus. That's a great way to say that. You succeed. I thought so. <laughs> Thank you. As you, as you open up the, uh, um, as you open up the trap door, you reach the final. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. Uh oh. Personal space. Uh oh. Oh fuck. The open this open belfry he offers a, a breathtaking view of the open sea and the distant coast. Four stone four stone corner posts support the belfry's con uh conical state of roof, where it peaks twenty feet above, with a, a quinlated battlement running between them. A human body is sprawled in a depression at the center of the stone floor. It's torso torn open and its heart missing. Uh, the base of what was once a metal framework surrounds the depression. Above the body, a large bronze bell engraved with symbols of peace and serenity hangs from a crossbeam, with a pole rope dangling from the rigging above. Across the floor, next to the body, a message is scrawled in chalk. Beware the sea killers. Well, that message seems rather clear.
Motherfuck. Are those... Is it the same creatures that were attacking last night, or...? Roll a medicine check, somebody. Oh. Uh, I'll roll a medicine check. I have proficiency in that. Why? Because fuck you, so that's why. All right. Um, don't tell people how to get their abilities. Uh, no, ability fair, fair. Proficiencies. I have no idea why um, I have a proficiency in investigation. <laughs> um, um, bullshit. What? First off. <laughs> Bullshit. I know exactly why I have it in investigation. So, you examine the body of um, who you presume to be Aaron. And uh, uh, you come to the conclusion um, that this probably was not a uh, one of the, quote, sea killers. One of the uh, many undead corpses that seem to have been uh, according to Janor's report rather it appears to have been um, a a pair of uh, large claws that have seemed to rip out this man's chest almost like that of the Parrington. I was going to say can I can I uh, like eyeball the Parrington from all the way up here and like make comparisons yes you can <laughs> Parrington. Yes, you can. He is. He is right here. <laughs> Where is he? Just above this rock. Yeah. I was gonna say. I I would like to make comparisons between like the wounds this person has suffered and the Parrington. Yeah, they. It seems pretty pretty spot on. And dry. So Parrington's from above and. Undead sea creatures from below. But it only I wanna seems to be fucked. It only I seems wanna to search be him. the one Parryton, though. At least on this island. I the wanna one search the body. Yes. Alright. You um you believe seeing as how the message was scrawled in mm. chalk and not in blood or anything like that, um, Leon. But uh Sorry, that was a Duncan and Humpton joke. Um, <laughs> and uh, once you're you think seven, that once he rang seven. the bell, which you guys did hear on your way in, um, you uh, you think that it probably he after he rang the bell, he re he saw the approach of the Parrington and scrawled a message before he could get back down. As quickly as he could. Mm. The sea killers. What was the full message? Again? Sorry. Beware, Beware the, the sea killers. Beware the sea killers. Who would want to kill the sea? I... I think he's referring to those undead creatures and that they're quite dangerous. You think that they're called the Sea Killers? I mean, that sounds more like uh, maybe like a rival pirate gang, you know? True, but that might not be their name. It might just be e what he's calling them. All hands. Wait. We're not the bullies. last time I heard the only. <laughs> are you having a <laughs> Are you having a bad moment? Ho. Last time I checked, the only beggars. <laughs> The, the last time I... God damn it. Um, something... <laughs> Alright, back on track. Something that you guys notice. Um, the depression on the floor appears to be a, uh, a very old um, oil receptacle that fueled a beacon, which is um, over in the scullery that we saw on the floor. Um... In the beacon, uh, I'm so sorry. The beacon, uh, the beacon appears to have been removed from the uh, the bellery, um, and obviously brought downstairs where this bell was, the belfry. Um, 
where the spell was installed. But you do see that the metal framework extended above that and uh, probably held the lenses that focused the light of the beacon's flame. It appears that this used to be a lighthouse. Hmm. I got all Her. that from a medicine check. <laughs> Let yeah, well, I'm just giving that to you. <laughs> I'm, I'm just joking. Man, I'm, I mean, this seriously would be a pretty good base. If it wasn't for, you know, the curse of whatever is happening to this, two miles south of this island. Yeah, but it's two miles away. It's two miles away, and yet it's caused to... It, it seems to have caused the fall of this fortress not once, but twice. Listen, I understand you like like civilization and talking to people. I get it. We don't have to continue having this conversation. <laughs> we just disagree. It's fine. <laughs> I like people. People are nice. Uh, well, uh, I wanted... <laughs> some, some people are good. Some people... Well, that's another topic for another day. Should we... Um, I'd like to check what I presume to be Aaron, his, uh, his robes for anything, for any other personal items that might be on him. Bruh. Bruh, how many times do I have to ask? Uh, <laughs> Whatever. Um, on his body, nothing of note. Okay. Just torn robes. Well, I can't find anything else. Should we head back down and explain what we saw? Sounds good. Okay. <laughs> Jump cut. Yep. Hey, yo! So, bad news. Terrible bad news. news. Oh, did you find Aaron? I am... Unfortunately, we did. I'm afraid so. <sighs> I mean, is he alright? She... He is not, She but... takes a big sigh, sits down. He... succumbed... From what I saw with his wounds, he succumbed to the Parryton shortly after he rang the bell this morning. A periton? Monstrous, uh, bird-like creature. Oh uh, my god. We disposed of it shortly after we landed on the island. So that is no longer a threat, but unfortunately it did. It was the end of Aaron, who... Uh, it... Who it tore apart and... Well, I won't get into the grisly details, but... He hmm. is unfortunately no more. I'm sorry. <sighs> you see her just sigh. Um, sit on the edge of the bed. Something that you, that I didn't mention before, but that is very important, is you all see a, a, a set of doors up here. Uh, do you know what's through those doors? I I haven't been able to get it open. Really? Well, I'm I'm quite good with doors. I. You are good at destroying doors, and even then, it takes a couple of your eldritch blasts. Do you know if it's locked or if it's jammed? Um, I think it's locked. I feel like I don't know. It seems magical. I'm not really sure though. When I touch it, my fingers get all tingly. Ooh. Well, perhaps we take the... Perhaps we make sure everything's closed up there. Maybe rehide the entrance. And, uh... I see that uh, those guys are still stabilized. We take a little bit of a rest. We make sure they stay alive. And then we cure them of their diseases. Would you guys say 
through the searching and everything that it took you guys an hour. Sure. I think yeah. that's reasonable. That's okay, so with you. that... Is he um, dead? Is this dude I'm dead? Going to, I'm, I'm gonna find out. Let's find out. You say he has advantage? Alright. And eight temporary hit points. Yep. And eight temp... That's actually extraordinarily helpful. And it's, yep. Who says wizards can't heal? Um, Actually, I do. Wizards can't heal very well. You could still heal, just not well. You say, uh, with, let me just toggle advantage you real just quick. just gave them an extra advantage. pocket of health, that's all. But Technically, it's a save, not a check, and enhanceability only gives saves. Happy advantage. Fourth of July, everybody. <laughs> Little, little lead on that one. And that Wait. succeeds. You see him <laughs> as the pustules <laughs> burst. Um, and what? Uh, I thought they didn't burst. If, no. Uh, if listen, listen. Just okay. shut the fuck up. Okay. Um, as the uh, as the pustules finally burst, you see him um, like gasping for breath, but uh, with a quick. Like, uh, uh, with, with the quick thinking of both, uh, Edward, uh, and Windchime, um, you're able to salve the, uh, um, the open pustules, and now the, uh, the, the pus is draining out of the face. You clean it up the best you can, um, and with that, he appears to be feeling... A modicum better without having um, the big blue pustules everywhere. But you you know, Windchime, that he is not, it's not over with yet. He just mm -hmm. looks a little bit better. Okay. And he's still alive. Nice. Yeah, let me, let me clean this up. Let's hope that this, uh, Pustule isn't particularly contagious. You might want to at least stay a little bit back. I'm gonna like press a digitate it from a distance. Try to like you know clean it up, move it away. You see, uh, he says, oh, "Thank you." Oh. It's, thank it's you. the least I can do. You should get some rest. And he goes to sleep. Resting. Now the party comes back down. We said everything we said before. Blah, 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 blah. <laughs> Everything's back on track. All right. So, uh, if it's all right with you guys, I think I'm going to, um, just. I I think we should bunko down for the night. Make sure everybody can be healed and uh, keep an eye on. Um, keep an eye on everyone. If they I... get in here, we'll fight them off. Do we want to fight think... them off so, from too. a vantage point or a chokehold? Are all the doors closed in the house above us? Well, you guys have broken in. To a couple of doors. Mm -hmm. um, this is That's just really a DM's note. It might be worth barricading some things using maybe some of the supplies that you guys have accumulated to fortify doors. I mean, do you think we could probably wedge a immovable rock between the handle of a door? That way, nothing can come through by forcing the door open, short of breaking the door down itself. By the way, I know you have one. <laughs> uh, Brian's gonna say, "Yeah, I like that idea. That would be it certainly uh, bars the door more effectively than almost anything else. We should use that on the door uh, to enter here. If you guys want to, I can start conjuring servants, and then we can have them help barricade the door." Let's make sure they barricade uh, as many doors as possible. They should be simple enough for us to remove, but uh, 
the longer time they spend uh, searching rooms that uh, have nothing in them, the less time they have to try and break down the door where we are. It's true. Side note. This is, this is an Emily, an Emily warning. You guys absolutely, like, you have plenty of options. Um, you can barricade the entire place. You've got a whole bunch of supplies, including oil of slipperiness, sovereign glue, immovable fraud, a whole variety of, uh, of available things that you can use to, uh, to move that. In addition, you have a variety of things as well that need to see yet to be identified. Um, and uh, it is, I don't know what time it was when I said last time, but we're going to say it is about uh, 3 p.m. Meaning, if they come at, uh, you all reason, if they come at nightfall, like you suspect, um, there is not time for a long run. Right, well, the point of being barricaded in here was for there to be enough time for Windchime to long rest through an attack. Was, yeah, at least, um, at least like, the hour we went to the, bell, to the bell tower, she was starting on her long rest. Yeah, right. she was starting on it. Again... Just, even if the rest of us can't long rest, her being able to long rest to get the ability to cure that disease is really important. Absolutely, um, I'm just letting you know the information. Yeah, uh, we could fortify the entire uh, thing, but I think the most important thing is to make this room safe enough for a wind chime to long rest in. Uh, the I other thing, the other thing that uh, is popping into my head is if we are planning on staying here overnight, there is a certain magical heart that uh, loses its power if we. Uh, do not if we do not Cast sell it. Cast repose on it. Okay. Yeah, we gentle proposed it. it. We are currently sitting at uh, four. No, it the wrath part is good for forty-eight hours. It's the meat that you're thinking of. Yeah, but we yes. gentle repose the meat because we're. A bunch no, of no, you gentle repose the heart, not the, the meat. The heart, not the meat. Oh, I wasn't. I wasn't aware that we. Well, Repose the heart, so that's still at forty-eight hours. Never mind. In that case, um, I'm not a particularly good cook. I could probably get a fire going, though. If it's magical in any way, I definitely want to see how uh, if it uh, eats well. I'm also interested in eating the heart. I think I heard something in a book once about eating dragon hearts. Well, and uh, I'm gonna look at her with like the weirdest look on my face. Either way, I do support um, getting this meat cured, cooked, whatever, so it doesn't go bad. Plus, we can share it um, uh, along with our compatriots here. I mean, I, I'm right beneath the kitchen. Let's cook that now before the kitchen becomes like a hot spot. I think so, but I think we should probably at least get some of the stuff we have identified. And also, a neighbor, I'm going to. Do you mind if you uh, hand over that book? In a weird unknown language for me, perhaps I could probably. Uh, I mean, the the this. I'm I'm sorry, but the specific reason that I got it is so that eventually I could learn how to speak it. So I, I mean, wouldn't having a translation help with that? I mean, wouldn't having a translator literally translate? I mean, you can take you. a look at it, sure. I mean, but like, I mean, I would, I, I mean, I. If it's all done for me, then I'm not really learning. That. You're aware that I can read virtually any oh, language. Shut, just shut the fuck! I give him the book. I'm gonna <laughs> take the book. <laughs> With like the snarkiest. You're so annoying! You're so annoying! You're so annoying. <laughs> well, yes. I mean, I'm sorry for knowing how to read. <gasps> I punch him in the face. <laughs> oh, I die because I'm a hit. wizard. Roll the hit. <laughs> no. <laughs> oh please! I don't, don't have unarmed strike equipped. That's okay. Which is weird <laughs> because I do. Get not a fire, but you you could use your... I punch him with my great axe. <laughs> <laughs> just, just, I'll just roll a d20. Alright. Plus your strength. So lot. <laughs> That's only plus two. That... <laughs> you're, you're actually punching him. Does a, a 14 hit? 
Uh, do I have mage armor? I do have mage armor. No, it does not. God damn it. That's embarrassing. Fuck you, Betty. I do know how to read. Well, let's not squabble amongst ourselves right now. It's quite what I look like. I don't. The other sack of. What is it? Beans? I'm not really quite sure what that was. I didn't get a good look at it, but I knew you had some stuff in your bag. I could have needed identification. I, I, are you still talking to me right now? I, I'm not really sure what the, it was. I didn't get a good look at it. Are you still talking to me right now? No. Okay. Oh, it was in the bag of holding. I'm gonna look at uh, you know, um, I'm gonna look at uh Brian with like the bag of holding. <laughs> you just know everything because it's that butter of yours, don't you? Uh, wind chime should put uh, a case of bolts in your inventory, by the way. Yeah, oh, wind I got chime. Bolts? Uh, you got yes. bolts. Specifically, plus two yeah. bolts. Plus two bolts. It's, it's plus two to hit. Yeah, it's 12 plus of them. Two plus, plus two, two to hit and plus two damage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> wind chime's going to have a heyday. Yeah, and wind chime, you can also put on the uh, breastplate, too, if you really want to get dirty. <laughs> Nemo can put it on, too. He's got medium armor perfect. It, it won't help Bro. with his movement, though. <laughs> I, I'm not wearing armor. Yeah, fair enough. Well. A barbarian that can't rage. Shall we go? It's medium armor. You can rage as long as you're not wearing heavy armor. Well, we clean out the armor. You just rest, wind chime. Um. Mm -hmm. Let's go take care of those traps and worry about the cooking as well. Um, we do need to set up. I think the oil of slipperiness would account would uh, make really good for a trap. I agree. I, mean, if we want, I just I have how do we? If we are if we are attempting to make a trap, we should be able to benefit from the effects of the trap. But if our main goal is just to uh, stay down here um, and make sure Windchime is unable to be attacked, we should be guarding this entrance specifically. <coughs> Sorry, I'm hiccuping. It's okay. Hmm. What if we uh, allowed the rest of the uh, area to just house these creatures for a small period of time? We will face them when we are slightly better equipped with wind chime here instead of uh, doing the long rest and uh, perhaps uh, fight them then. Save some of our traps for th that fight. Are you proposing that we basically bite the bullet in this scenario and um, you know, tough it out for the night without any encounters so that we can Fight them later on with our full power. Lose the battle with the water, right? It's not a bad idea. It's not. Fair enough. Are we planning on getting out of here tonight, though, or are we just planning on surviving the night? I want to stay around these uh, people. We don't have access to the wave chaser because it is on a different island. Plus, the shores uh, make it difficult for it to make landfall. Exactly. So... Uh, our best bet is to wait until morning and wait for the ferrymen to arrive again. To get these people off. Then we uh, make this place... Basically, then we fortify the uh, fortress. Hehe, <laughs> fortify the fortress. And... Uh, take advantage of the fact that we don't need to play protection duty. No offense. None taken. None, none taken. But I... I did have something. I, I don't know. I just, um... I think that they might be back to look for any survivors and what... But I think the main reason that they're going to come back is for the rest of the <clears throat> bodies we, we did leave the body of one of your oh, people what I mean, 
What I mean is in the grotto. You think they're coming to marshal their forces, taking the and dead to create more of themselves. Yeah, that's what I think. How many dead are in the grotto? I didn't get the greatest look, but I mean, probably 10 to 12. It's a large number. To be sure, but how many of those creatures are there already? I don't know. How many? Well, let's. I, I think I have an idea for another plan. Let's. Uh, first off, um, can Edward? Can you go uh, up to the um, body we left uh, in the tower and burn it? All right. I mean, do you have any objections? To Does anyone here have any objections towards me cremating Philbet? And then I specifically I look at Janor. I think that that's was... probably the best option. It would. Right. He definitely wouldn't want to become one of them. And so the right, ones uh... in the grotto are they clearly wet? So, you remember what she told you? She said that um, there was like bags of like uh, like nets with bodies in it. They appeared mm. to have like put them into the grotto and left, and took right. some off. Not all of them, but some off. Right. Maybe the ends know it's worth investigating the area to see mm -hmm. what's going on there. All right. Um. Why don't we go and uh, get everything taken care of, okay? I'm going to start climbing up to, like, you know, start a fire outside and cremate Philbert's body. Okay. Uh, I'm going to cast Unseen Servant as a ritual and have him start, like, gathering sticks, you know, planks, whatever pieces of wood I can get to, like, you know, throw together in a fire. Make a funeral fire. Yeah. Uh, I think we should all head towards the grotto. One time you continue resting. Please. Poor wind chime doesn't get into I, uh, shit. Honestly, <laughs> I am sorry, but like it is a hundred percent the right play, and I feel like shit about it. <laughs> is it really? Mean? I mean, like, okay. what's to okay. say that we have to come back to the island once they're gone? Why can't we just leave? I no, no, no. The reason she is the reason she is doing the long rest is because we want these two to survive. Especially, especially the dwarf. Well, especially the other one as well for you know good nature and all that. But but the dwarf for uh, the fact that we're all uh, loot hungry goblin mo uh, <laughs> goblin uh, killing monsters who uh, murdered our own captain in cold blood. Wait, I wasn't there for that. Sorry. All right. How long is a long rest? Eight hours. Nice. I mean, last call. Oh, any? Uh, I know you have something that uh, needs identifying. Do you think you can hand that over? I'll look at uh, Brian. Oh yes, of course. Um, also, uh, Moonsick also has stuff that needs to be identified. Yep. Anything that uh, you don't know what it is, give it to me. Six small capsules of something to identify. I I don't also, have that stuff. Also, any yes, you do. I have the quail's feather token and the amber block. The quail's feather token needs to be identified. Okay. Uh, and then, uh, I think, and in case uh, you all don't know. The ring of free action technically would need to be identified as well. Um, right. The sovereign glue, the oil of flipperiness, like all of these are magic items. Yes. Technically, all of them. Like, have magic yeah. Items. Technically, yeah. Everything. I could. Uh, I could see people knowing what the immovable rod and the bag of holding. Like those are pretty clear. Um, 
Also, the immovable rod, you notice it's shaped um, like tentacles. And like, the, the tentacles on either side. Anyway, um, thank you. Um, yeah, ring of free action, oil of slipperiness, the folding boat. Um, I'm sure you can figure out the baton with continual flame on it. Uh, the capsules, the sovereign glue, the uh, quails, uh, uh, quail the quail feather, feather token yeah. with an anchor on it. The let's see, the plus two bolts are fine. The just seeing if I have anything else that I made note of. Um, you st don't forget that you have the map as well. You have the flask of oil of slipperiness from before, the charm of plant command. Um, you have a bunch of assassin berry wine. Let's see. Uh, the spell scrolls, gust of wind, speak with animals, speak with plants, control water. Um,. See, I mean, with these spell scrolls, I would know what they are without identify because I could read our game incantation rates. True, 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 true. So, charm of plant command. I already and did then... test it. Cool. Yeah, and I think that's all that needs to be identified. All right. Also, anyone here want the ability to? Sorry. Yeah, I mean, I did find a charm stashed away uh, upstairs. Oh, in yes, the I remember office. that. Didn't we agree that uh, uh, we'd figure out what to do with it later when it was more appropriate? I mean, I, I think it's probably more appropriate now that we've finished going through this entire stronghold. True enough. Um, but we haven't. We have to go deal with the grotto. Let's go do that. Let's fair go, enough, fair enough. Let's go uh, take care of that first. I'm gonna head outside. Then we can hunker down. Yep. Yeah, and then, you know the deal? Uh, ritual cast Unseen Servant to have you know, gather wood, uh, you know, and pile it up in a big pile. All, all in the meantime, I'm casting Identify on whatever magic items I have on hand. As a ritual. Oh, right. So he's basically down for the count alongside uh, Wind Chime. So I guess the three people who are not down for the count casting rituals or... Um, long resting. Long resting are going to go investigate the grotto. Let's pull you guys out. Mm. Okay. Oh, I did not mean to do that. I'm sorry. <laughs> Let's revive again, my dudes. <laughs> Too bad, that was a crit damage. <laughs> so no, this is was. the grotto that she was talking about. Yeah. Where? I still can't- oh, right here, out through this door, yeah. Okay. So we come out here, and I guess what do I see? The stone peaks of the island rise alongside the walls of the Hermitage to create a sheltered grotto, overlooked by a rampart walkway along the west side of the formal fortress, which you guys were previously on. A steep path ascends ten feet from a short strand of beach to an exterior door, which is what you just came out of. A bolt a boat is pulled halfway up on the beach, the stern riding low in the water. I'm going to look into the water, uh attempting to see if uh those creatures are anywhere near. Roll me a perception, perception check. Yeah. Um 
Yeah, you pretty clearly, uh, you can see, um, just underneath the water, um, right here, if that loads, there you go, right there, uh, appears to be a large mass of corpses, um, bound together in fishing net, uh, and any undead? You don't see any. Alright. You do, however, notice the large rowboat. Um, it appears to be able to hold up to eight medium-sized humanoids. Um, and is propelled by some oars in a very small sail. Um, however, upon looking at it, the uh, uh, somebody has clearly damaged the boat as uh it is half submerged and its hole its hole has several holes uh the foldable boat how big is it well you have to uh, he's currently investigating the foldable boat right now and he has a little bit more information you don't know the, oh, the foldable boat is tiny cool. Oh that was yeah, also super a magical, magical item I, I super had to fucking... identify. I knew it was magical. I didn't know I had to identify. That one, but... yeah, you're gonna want to identify to be able to get that full what that is. I'm okay. the only one that can ritual cast it. Um, the uh, but yeah, um, interesting. Well, um. Maybe think... mending could do it, but if somebody has it. Hmm. I do not. Whistles and not a magic caster. So does <laughs> Animo. Um, <laughs> yep. Point is, um, I'm going to go, well, I think we should probably, maybe, definitely uh, get those bodies out of the water to a defensible location. That's so. what we're going to have to do. You, it's going to take more than one person to pull this up. It's probably going to take all three of you. you yep. It looks to be quite a few bodies that are sunk beneath the waves. Uh, da -da -da. I am very much wishing I had taken a different spell. Um, do you still have those potions of water breathing? You don't know that they're water breathing potions. I. Not yet, at least. Mm. Yeah, unfortunately, that's how that goes, but. Fair enough. <clears throat> Never mind. Um, I am going to take the first dip because I can just breathe underwater naturally. I want to see what I can see. Um, and... So can an ammo. Yeah, yep. I, I'll come down too. There's no reason why. Um. Well, I I can hold my breath forever. I can't breathe. There's a difference. I do I do have the bag of holding. Uh, I know that can't carry all of these. I'm well aware. It would it? I, I'm well yeah. aware. Um, but I know that it does contain the rope and the fishing gear that, uh, such that we might be able to haul this. Um, if do you pop in the water. But I am gonna pop in the water. To start okay. off with. You you and Anamo both uh, pop in the water. Um, Moonzik, I assume you're keeping watch. Yep, keeping watch over them and keeping And watch help over when the they city. can. Yep. Um, it appears to be that. No, uh... no, no, go ahead. Oh, okay. It appears to be that uh, um, as both. Brian and uh, Anemo, you swim under the water. Um, it appears that they uh, have gathered all of the corpses into a large fish fishing net. Um, it seems to be weighted uh, down with rocks. Um, with Based on how it looks, it looks like that whoever this was had intention to take these corpses away. Uh, 
Um, however, I'm going to need a strength check from um, both Anemo and Brian to see if you guys can't lug this onto the surface. Hello? Yep. Hi. Oh. Okay. Oof. Gonna need a pretty good strength. My rules today. Check. The rolls today are athletics, all over the I place. guess. No, just strength. Or just pure strength. Strength, strength okay. is fine. Um, if you want to do athletics, I suppose that's fine. Quinn, do I, you get I'm an extra bonus a... for athletics? Okay, I uh, don't. Uh, I don't. Are you proficient? Think, uh, wait, hold up. Uh, no. Oh, yes, I do. Yes, I do. I get plus two on top. Uh, oh, then yeah. go ahead and re roll that. Then. Yay! <laughs> oh, my oh, my God. God. <laughs> Rage for advantage. Rage for um, advantage. Okay. So, I am going to do a little... Okay, my athletics is trashed here. I am going to do a little... Um, Begging the DM. Um, I'm in the water. Uh, I have a natural swim speed. Uh, can I argue that while the um, while bodies are buoyant and therefore helping me, um, I don't get the same disadvantages uh, that would happen from swimming because I'm actually faster in the water. Uh, well, so nobody had disadvantage. Well, I mean, uh, but naturally, these bodies are buoyant, part... right? Yeah, but they're weighted down with rocks. And also, well, their I, bodies I'm are... gonna go swim down and deal and also, remove the rocks. Also, the bodies are naturally buoyant if they're living and have air in their lungs. They're dead underwater. And the water decomposition uh, process is also incredibly buoyancy inducing. Mm. Okay, so yeah, bodies uh, actually you, float up when you, they expand because of rigor. What you can do is you can cut open the uh uh the netting if you wanted to but and that would lower the overall dc i would say but no you don't you can't and i can't exactly. remove the rocks you would have to cut open the netting okay i'm going to do that and then okay. as you cut open the netting bodies start to, to bodies float up yeah, see why I didn't want to roll athletics? <laughs> because you got a two. So, after cutting open the uh, the rope, you see, it, uh, yeah, bodies start to kind of meander, floating their way up, and you guys are having trouble um, gathering everybody. This is going to sound horrible, but am I able to tie a rope to my daggers? throw the dagger at the bodies and like pull them that way to shore you could also just swim yeah <laughs> unless you really don't want to get wet he's doing like a scorpion impression from Mortal Kombat get over here <laughs> so so if I had um, grasp of Hadar with uh, Eldritch Blast could I Eldritch Blast the bodies to bring them closer to oh me oh my Christ. god you actually could <laughs> That's a very good point you put right there. Here's what I'll say this. I'll say, I don't fucking care how you guys go about it. You are able to eventually gather up all of the bodies. It just takes you guys a really long time. We'll say this whole process um, takes you like half of an hour to just gather everybody all together um, and onto the shore. In total, you count uh, between the three of you, I should say. Uh, in total, you count uh, uh, 13 bodies. Oh. Um, uh, this is where I'm Mostly humans had... and half elves, along with one dwarf. This is where I wish I had uh, create or destroy water so that we could burn them immediately. Um. <laughs> 
But I decided against grabbing that, even though I could. Shoulda, coulda, woulda. Yeah. Yes, worshipping the sea god by not being able to create one. I know, right? It's such a flavor fail. <laughs> hmm. So you guys have 13 bodies laid up on the shore. Couldn't we possibly use some of the sand to dry up the uh, some of the water that's it, like at least on them to at least like burn the surface of their bodies? Well, the problem is that we want to burn the bodies, and sand also makes that more difficult. Mm. I do still have a couple flasks of oil that would help in the process. Yeah, and if we got the fire big enough, uh, the water wouldn't actually hamper it. Hmm. Uh, I'm going to look at the crow. Uh, crow twice if you think you can make a fire big enough. Ah, ka. <laughs> it caws twice, for it is a bird. <laughs> and cannot speak. But can caw twice. <laughs> also, well, also, there are two coals on some... the map. There are actually two goals on the map. That's great. Oh, um, did I put another coal on the map? I put it yeah, one has map. an effect on it. That's the that's light. Yeah, that's the light effect. It's already been an hour. It's expired. Yeah. Yep. <laughs> you know, putting it in the corner doesn't do anything. <laughs> <laughs> anyway. Yep. Um, so, I guess let's use the oil and let's try and burn their bodies. If we can do that, then there's nothing we have to defend here. At least in theory. What about... At least in theory. What about Aaron and, uh, Filbert? You or mean the... Or were they part of the total? Were they part of the total? Well, we we're, we're, we're burning... We're burning the guy at the top. Right? Yeah. We already know that. We've got a pyre set up. Um... um let's just... Let's just try and, um... Well, let's just burn all the bodies we have. Okay. Legitimately, just burn them all. That's 15 bodies in total, by the way. My god. Yep. Fucking massacred. It, it, uh, it, including Filbert, Aaron, and the 13 bodies in front of you. Let's do it. Right, I guess. I think Fatter Watch Island now has a new policy on what happens to the dead. <laughs> <laughs> well, I suppose. Do we want? Do you want me to try and put the oil on them and then light them? Uh, let's try and move them. Uh, let's not move them through the whole thing. That was a lot of work just to get them onto the shore. Indeed. Let's pull them away from the shore a bit, and uh, let's collect uh, some wood to bring over here to help create fuel for a large fire. And we'll use the oil and we'll burn them. Sounds good. And can we just do that? Yeah. There's, like a, there's a tree over here we could probably just kind of like... I mean, I was just going to short rest, get a second level spell slot, and enlarge the fire pit. You yeah. already did. You already did. Um, oh my! Short God. rest. Yeah, you were you were there for an hour, weren't you? Were you not? Yeah. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. Was... Also, you can use any hit die you want to. Okay, so this counts as a short rest, right? Well, when you were down there with wind chime, yeah. Yeah. The rest oh, of us don't get a short rest. Slot, because wizard is I am still down exactly um, my 
uh, rage bonus. Um, how long would that take us to burn all the bodies? It's going to take a while for them to continue to burn away. Um, altogether, even with a, like a large fire, it's going to take you a couple of hours. Okay. Burn Can we do it before bodies. dark? You should be able to get it done before dark. Then let's do let's it. Let's, do there's no time to waste. Um, while those bodies are burning, are you guys going to try to fortify anything else? Uh, I would like to say a couple of words first. Uh, at the burning of the bodies, I will say, though I did not uh, know any of these brave men and women, they fought valiantly to defend their home. We will fight to make sure that no more fall to these creatures that slayed them. Their burning, though it may not have been the uh, their choice in life, will ensure that no more undead will rise from their fall. So we thank them again for their sacrifice and death. Well said. And I am going to say a prayer to uh, Aeun for uh, safe passage. And I'm also going to subtract you pray the flask of oil. To... Okay. Um, as you pr- as you pray to Aeun, um, you feel a, uh, a a massive wave of nausea just swell over you. And uh, you hear in your in your head loud consume before the headache fades. Excuse me. Oh, I can't get my voice out though. Consume. I can't. I can't do that though. But very deep, a uh, reverberating voice. Consume. Consume. <laughs> yeah. In, uh, in the back of your head before the uh, all of those just passes. made me feel uncomfortable. <laughs> that, I they weren't even. Like, that's the they point. weren't. No, they weren't even like deep. It was just like you guys were too close to the mic and. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> I, it, it, it was, was meant deep. to make everybody feel uncomfortable. I was deep and also close to the mic, though. <laughs> I just have so, a uh, voice. I can't help. Yeah. It. Zoom. <laughs> <laughs> I wanted to bring a little bit of Kyle into this one. <laughs> oh my god, I'm gonna consume! Oh no! Oh god. <laughs> did, did any one of you say something? No, nothing. I'm sorry. I, uh, it was weird. Didn't hear anything? No. Are you alright? Yeah, a little bit of a headache, feeling a little nauseous. Well, we should set up a barricade. Probably the smell of the burning bodies. <laughs> we should. Yeah. Just, while we're here and keeping an eye on, you know, the the uh, the fire, we should probably get a barricade ready, so when the fire is finished burning, we can block the door immediately. I agree. I can't imagine that they'll. Uh, End the research early if they find that the bodies are gone. I must agree. And then, um, during this session, or during this period as well, Moonsick would like to roll medicine on himself because the wounds that he sustained were from the, uh, the walkway uh, from earlier on collapsing and is trying to see if he can't maybe heal some of that treat some of that. Sure. Roll uh, a medicine check. Okay. Nope. Uh, you don't. They don't look infected. But you're pretty fucking bruised up. A okay. couple of cuts here and there. Nothing crazy. Okay. I'm just trying to do something without expending, you know, the hit dice. Mm-hmm. 
Uh, can I take a short rest? Don't you so guys? Is everybody short? <laughs> is everybody short resting? Yep. Or are you guys gonna continue to barricade? Um. Moonzik's gonna we continue got to barricade. serpents up, right? The serpents can barricade. That's true. Okay. Moonzik's well, speaking actually of the ends. Uh, I, I, as we watch the bodies burn, is when I want to do this. As much as I love barricade is, at the right. end. As much as I'd love that, Cam was saying something. Sorry. I was going to say, Moonzik does actually want to start uh, cooking the the paratin meat and wants to see if there's anything in the kitchen that's worth salvaging for ingredients. Sure. And what about what about you? You said there's something that you want to do while the bodies are burning? Well, that's when I want to do the short rest. I don't want to do it after the bodies are burning. Okay. I figured things would be going on while the body's burning, because they're burning for several hours. Practice ninjutsu. Yeah, one of the things I wanted to do, because one of the pl main places I want to barricade is that door that we come in through. Uh, so I want to do the uh, short rest first. That way we have the maximum amount of time to barricade stuff. I also think somebody should be watching this at all times, just in case the fire attracts attention. Small possibility. I don't necessarily need to short rest. I've got all my rages, got all my hit points. Uh, yeah, I just want to short rest so that I can uh, teleport or have somebody else teleport. Okay, so here's what we're going to do, my friends. Um, for right now, we are going to take a break. When we come back, you guys can tell me exactly what you're planning on doing. Please think about where, what areas you're planning on barricading and how, um, what supplies you're using. I'm going to assume that everybody that during this process, um, Edward, your identification stuff's all done. Um, Comprehend languages on the book. Uh, no, maybe later. We'll get to that later. We'll, that we'll get later. to that later. Um, so you now, when you come back, you will have access to all of the. Uh, uh, the magical items that you can use um and i will post those in to the uh to the wild wild mount chat um so that you all can pick and choose or do whatever awesome all right me okay we'll be back at um at eight o'clock sounds good nice yeah all right, All right sure. uh, everybody, th uh, thank you so much for watching part one. We will see you shortly with part two. Take care.